Whitlock Spamsel. Step 1. For this, we're going to use a number 8, 3 extra long nymph hook, or streamer hook. And we definitely want a, a hook with a little bit of length to it. Step 2. For the tail, we're going to use a very small portion of olive marabou. Peel that off. Snip off those curly ends. Lay that in right along the hook shank. It doesn't really have to cover the whole hook shank, or it can if you want. It just depends how much of a base you want to create. Step three. Now we're going to come in with some, uh, some ribbing here, some solid silver wire. Step four. And we'll use some uh, Antron dubbing for this, again, to add just a bit of sparkle. We want a very thin body on this fly, nice and tight and very thin. You could use rabbit as well, but the antron is has a nice effect. You can see we're tying that in very tight, right tight to the hook shank. Come in there and end the fly about two thirds of the way down. Step five. And reverse wrap our ribbing which is not really going to show up that much, but it's always a good idea for reinforcement. Tie that off, making sure it's tied down well before it's snipped. Step six. And this is uh, some Swiss straw or raffia. We're going to take and spread out the, the fiber and trim some of it off because it's going to be a little bit too thick for this size of hook. It tends to get too bulky. What do you want, about an inch, inch wide, three quarters of an inch? Yeah, I'd say somewhere in around there, probably an inch. You'll have to play with it a bit in order to feel what is right for the size of hook you're using. Tie that in right on top of the hook. Step seven. And now we're going to use some speckled hen saddle, and you could use olive or brown or uh, or tan or gray, something to uh, add a bit of contrast to your fly. And tie that in by the tip with the upper portion of the feather facing you, so that all the fibers curve towards the tail of the fly. Takes that shiny side up again. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now here you really only want maybe one or two at the very most turns of this because we don't want to create too many legs yet. We're going to add a couple more sections of legs as well. Step eight. Add a little bit more dubbing for this. Just a tiny bit. You don't want it too thick. Dub it nice and tight to the body. We're going to have two wing cases and a head, so we want to kind of space that out in thirds. Now bring your scissors in and fold over, leave this wing case a little bit extended past, past where it would normally be folded over or pulled back. You can see there we've created a little bit of extra space, a little bit of length to the wing case. Adds for a nicer look. Take and fold that raffia back and tie it down. Step nine. We'll come in with another hen saddle feather, snip off the tip, tie it in identical to the last step. One or two turns so that it's the tops facing us and the fibers will wrap towards the back of the hook. Snip that off clean. Hold it all back towards the back. Pinch it flat on top. Step 10. And again, dub a little bit of dubbing underneath the wing case. 
just as much as last the last step. Step 11. And we'll tie one more set of leg legs, and you can see I've prepared this one a little more than the last ones and stripped off all the phyla plume and cut the tip already. Again, angling towards the back of the fly. And you can just use two sets of legs if you like. It's a little bit easier. I don't think it really matters. Snip that off nice and clean. And again, we're leaving some space for the head of the fly here. Hold that last wing case over. Step 12. Now here we're going to burn some eyes. We're going to use some uh, monofilament and burn both ends of it. Preferably use some mono around the 40-pound uh, mark, something in and around there. This might be a little bit light. Step 13. And see how they're going to turn out here. These ones are slightly pointed up. It doesn't really matter. Prefer to have them pointed straight out, but this is the way they turned out. How wide are they? Just uh, about a quarter of an inch there? Wide enough for the head? Yeah, just I... wide enough so that they're going to stick out of the head when we pull the wing case or the uh, raffi over the head. You can oh. see there. Not really too far from the from either side of the fly. Try and figure eight them in so that you're going to get them nice and secure to the hook. Step 14. Here we're going to dub in and around the eyes just to fill in that space with a tiny bit of antron. Again, make sure that those eyes are tied in nice and tight so they're not going to slide around on you. Pull them out of the way. And pull that over top of the eyes. A little bit crammed for space here, but we'll be able to manage. Get that clean. Step 15. Come in with the whip finish. You can always push it out of the way with your finger if you don't have quite enough room, just like that. That's a great looking fly. Yeah, it's quite detailed. You can take and trim some of the legs away as well, so they're not so bulky in there. A little bit heavy for legs unless you trim them away. Just throw out both sides of the fly. It's a little more realistic. Good for lakes as well, I guess. Yeah, very good leg fly. Not quite as much action to this fly, but uh, definitely very much quite a bit of detail. Step 